All right, if you made it this far, it's a good sign. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a couple videos going more in detail into ggplot2, which I introduced earlier. But before we do that, I want to show you how you can find and utilize some of the data sets that are provided within R. And so one way to pull that up is to load this library, but set it up so that you're asking for the help file. So if we type library help equals and then using the library there we will type in data sets. This is going to pull up a window for us where we can actually look at a couple different data sets we can automatically load into R because it's part of the, the base packages here. So let's take a look here. I've actually taken a look at a couple of these and I thought it'd be good for us to start with the trees data set. Okay, so if you scroll down here you can see we have a data set that we can look into called trees provides the girth height and volume for blackberry trees so let's take a look at what that looks like so what I'm gonna do is assign to this data set that trees data set now let me remind you the reason it looks like this is because we actually already have this data set here but if I were to run this code will already have all that data. Normally you're going to be loading some sort of file but if we set it up this way we'll just have that data set in, uh, in a data object that we can reference. So let's see this is a, a fairly small data set which is going to be good for practicing plotting but let's take a look. So we have 31 observations and it's going to give us the girth, height, and volume of the trees. So this might be a nice way to show some scatter plots and so we can get started right away so let's add at the top of this list here I suppose we could get rid of this up here but let's add in library ggplot2 which you should already have installed if you don't have it installed you can come up to tools install packages and type in ggplot2 but assuming you have it already installed this should be ready to go and then don't forget to run the line so we actually load it in. So let's let's talk for a brief second about the structure of a ggplot function. So the idea here is that we want to be providing data, the aesthetic mapping for that data, and then the layers for that plot. And so the way that this is set up is we're going to have a ggplot and within this ggplot we're going to have a reference for our data and then we're also going to have some aesthetics here okay so here's our data here's our aesthetics which we haven't we haven't assigned anything to yet and then once that object is set up we're going to add to it some type of plotting layer and in this case we're going to do a a point plot so that's a geom point point okay so this is set up in a way that we don't really have anything here and we're not gonna be able to run this because we're missing we haven't defined here our X and Y yet but we can do that pretty easily and the way that we'll do that is we'll just say X is equal to something and Y needs to be equal to something as well okay we haven't picked those yet but this is this is kind of the layout of how that might look if we go back into our data set, we could pick something. So what if we said the X will be height and the Y will be girth? So all we need to do there is say X equals height and Y equals girth. And then I'll just double check to make sure that that's correct, written correctly. And so now we have everything we need. So you'll see we have our plot and within our plot we've given our, our data and then the X and Y aesthetic for that data. So before I even run this entire line, let me just run this component by itself so that we can see what that looks like. So the first step basically to this ggplot structure is that we're creating basically this foundation for our plot. We don't have any layers in here for what's in the plot, but we've said here's the height on the X axis Here's the girth on the y-axis, 
uh, how do we what do we want to see now we want to see these plots so if we run this whole line we're going to have this layer at the bottom and then on top of it will be all the points that are mapped to this data that we provided so now when we run this now we see all 31 points here so we see there is some correlation it seems between height and and girth um, we can look into that later but but that's a pretty great start to this plot but one of the nice things about this setup here is within our aesthetic, we can assign even more than just X and Y. And since we have three points here, we could say size equals girth. And now this is a bit redundant, but we're going to have the, the girth equal to the, the size here as well. So when I run that now, you'll see as girth increases, the size of these points increases as well. And, and maybe if we found, found that redundant, we could come in here and, okay, well, volume, maybe we should have used volume instead, right? So let's change this to volume. And now when I rerun this plot, it's gonna look pretty similar, but actually now this is referencing the data we have from volume. And if that wasn't enough, we can also add a color. So what do we want to have representing the color? I mean, we'll, again, we're getting a little bit redundant here because we only have three points. But we could say height is equal to color just to demonstrate that. And maybe we'll pick a different data set to try this on. But let's just say height equal, equals color. And we can split these out too just to make it a little more easy to read. And let's see, what does this look like? So now what you'll see is we still have our X and Y. The points still exist on the same points, but now they also have a size and a color, which is associated to their height and their volume. So that's pretty good, pretty nice. We could also go back to our original data set, right? If we change this to MPG, this is what we used before, right? We had car data in there. This is perhaps a, a bigger data set, might be more interesting, but we can keep the structure here the same, right? We just have to change our X, Y, size, and color, but we should be able to use this. We'll just have to come into this data and, and pick some things out that are of interest to us. So let's see, maybe we can have the displacement on the X, so we can replace this with dispel. For the Y, we could have this this STY variable and perhaps for size maybe we could use this cylinder and then here's here's a, a nice thing about this is we already know there's factors in here and that's probably a better use for the color for this so let's use the class for the color here and now when we run this plot, we have a new data set and a whole new mapping here. But you see, we just we basically kept everything, the structure of it's still the same. And so we've been able to map an entirely different data set, but it still follows the same general format. So then to summarize again, we had three main elements here. We had our data, our aesthetic mapping, and then our layer. So we have our the, the structure here, ggplot, assign the data, assign the aesthetic, and then close this ggplot, and then add on the layers. And we can add more than one layer too. We don't just have to have points. We could have other things on this plot as well. In the next few videos, I'll go over a couple different types of plots we can produce with ggplot. So I'll see you then.